This is an instructional video on how to set up and use Anki to learn language vocabulary, whether that's for GCSE or A-level or beyond. I'll break this video down into the benefits of Anki compared to other flashcard apps, how to download it, how to import the correct GCSE or A-level vocabulary deck, and how to use Anki in the long term, especially for GCSE and A-level students. So starting from scratch, there's various ways to learn vocabulary. The simplest way would be reading off a list, maybe from your textbook or example specification, and trying to memorize every word. This is not super effective. In the same way, rereading a textbook is not effective because your brain is not doing any work, so you won't be able to get these words in your long-term memory easily. But as a one-off, you can of course pull up the example specification to look at your vocab list. So why do I particularly like Anki? Well, it uses this concept of spaced repetition, which if you're learning anything new, you need to understand this concept because it's how your brain works and how memorization works. Spaced repetition essentially means revising information at increasing intervals of time. This method is effective because it leverages the way your brain naturally forgets things, prompting you to recall the information just as you're about to forget it, thus strengthening the connection. Anki does all of this for you, so you tell it how well you know a card, and its algorithm will show you the cards you know the least first. Another reason Anki is so good is because it's editable, so on Quizlet for example you can't edit a card if it's in someone else's deck, but on Anki you can super easily. Anki is also less distracting I think, there's no ads, there's fewer buttons. Now that I've hopefully convinced you to use Anki, let's go through the setup instructions. It's not meant to be complicated, but in the past students have stayed away from Anki because they don't know how to use it. So step one is downloading Anki itself. I would recommend you do this first on a desktop like laptop or a computer, and then you can do it on some sort of iPad or phone later on. So go to apps.ankiweb.net or just search Anki Download into Google. It should look something like this. Click download and it will show you the options based on what type of computer you have. If you're unsure which one you need to click, ask a parent. Once you open up the app which you've just downloaded, it will look like this. Here, I would recommend you to click sync and it'll ask you to create an account. You can do this step a bit later on, but you do need to create an account to sync all of your data across various devices that you can use and onto the cloud so it's all backed up. Okay, step two is how to import decks. You can create your own flashcards using the create deck button and clicking add. But for the purposes of learning lots of vocabulary, I recommend using pre-made decks. There's two ways to get the decks made by me, so either on the Anki marketplace or from my website. I'll quickly show you both. So on astarlanguages.com slash Anki, there's lots of decks for GCSE and A-level, and I will be making more, so these aren't all of them. Let's say you do AQA Spanish. You can click on the download button and it will download an APKG file. This is a special file type that works with Anki. Save this file to a computer and then click import file on Anki like you see me do here. And that's it, now you've got the deck all ready to go. Before I show you how to use this, I'll show you how to download a deck from the Anki marketplace. So go to ankiweb.net slash shared slash decks. And you can search GCC Spanish for example, and some of the decks there are mine. Likewise, if you go to the link on screen, it will take you to the decks made only by me. You can click on the right one, click the blue download button towards the bottom, and then save the file and import it into Anki just as I've shown you here. Okay, step three is how to actually use Anki. There's a setting you need to change just before we can get started. So hit the options wheel, so click on the settings wheel, click options, and here make sure both of these numbers are set to 9999, so they're almost the highest that they will go. And this just means your progress every day won't be limited. And this is what I have my setting as. If you want to change it in the future, you can. And there's other settings here as well, but I would leave them all the same for now and just make sure you click save. Now you can see all of the cards in these decks. I've picked an A-level Spanish one and a GCC Spanish one. You can use the plus icons here to open up the decks and some of the minus icons to hide them, etc, etc. Let's have a go with the GCC um, cards and show you how I would use Anki every single day. If you're a foundation student, for example, you can delete the higher tier decks here. So for example, theme one, topic one, if you do foundation only, you can click here on higher tier and delete these so you only get access to the foundation ones. If you make a mistake, you can click control Z and you'll get the cards back. And you can always go back and import the deck again if you delete cards and you want them back. But if you're a foundation student, get rid of the higher tier ones. For A level, I'd recommend, specifically with, with this AQA deck here, get rid of the English and Spanish ones and only do Spanish into English for the start. In the future, if you want to change it again, you can always change it back. And this is what I mean by Anki is very customizable. So in terms of daily use, let's assume we're a Yo 11 GCC student. Let's say, for example, so AQA theme one. First, I would hide all of these sort of adjectives and nouns. I'll just click on 
the main sort of foundation higher decks. If I just do that for a second, I can just click minus here to hide these. So theme one, let's say topic two, I'm doing topic two in class, education and work. I would start with the foundation cards first because higher tier students need to know both. Click on foundation and there's 214 cards for the topic of education and work in the foundation AQA cards. Click study now. Do you want to zoom in quickly? Okay, so here's the word educativo. If you know what this means, you say it in your head, you click show on to click the space bar, click the show on to button at the bottom. Let's say you, you, you knew the word, you got it easy because it was it's a cognate anyway. You can click the easy button here and this 4D means the same card will come to you again in four days time because Anki thinks you know the word, you clicked it's easy. Now let's focus on the harder words and we'll show you this card again in four days. If you didn't know it, you click again and it will come up again in less than 60 seconds. This one's easy. Rabahador might be a tricky one. I click enter, I have no idea what this means. Oh look, it means hardworking. I can click again and the same card will come up again in just under 60 seconds. And just like this, you can keep going, work your way through clicking one, two, three or four, depending on is it again hard, good or easy, depending on how easy you know it, it's up to you, you can sort of, you know, play around with it. I'd mainly use the number one and the number four, the again and the easy ones, but you can make use of the middle ones as well, depending on what the end time interval is. It won't always be 10 minutes or six minutes, sometimes it'll go to like one month or two months, depending on how much you use it and how long you've been using Anki for. And something else to quickly show you if I zoom out. So the blue numbers here are your new cards, cards that you haven't seen before. If I scroll down to the GCC ones here, which was, I was doing these ones, wasn't I? Um, so for example, topic two, the green words are the words that are due now and the red ones are the ones you're actively doing. I'd always recommend starting with a specific deck and working your way down. So for example, go through all of these foundation words, these 205 words, then do the higher tier ones and maybe the day after, you'll get like 100 or 200 words in the green section, which means you've got to do them, you've got to review them. And Anki is quite repetitive. You'll do sort of the same sort of words multiple days or multiple weeks. And that is how you're going to learn the words really, really well. I've just switched over to my personal account. So this is my personal deck that I'm doing. I'm currently learning French. These are the French topics here. So sort of GCC French deck. So for example, theme one, I've gone through a lot of theme one mainly. So there's no new cards. It's all sort of zero here. 82 is quite low for the amount of cards that are in this deck. I need to go through 82 more cards and slowly want these numbers to basically reach zero. Um, theme two, I haven't finished theme two. I've got 55 cards here left, a brand new cards to go through. 235, again, quite a big number. I've got a lot of cards here that I sort of don't know very well. And theme three, Again, again, I know most of them, there's not as many cards here. Um, and this is how Anki works. You've got these different colors and you just keep doing them again and again. So for example, starting here, I'm gonna, I can click on the big themes deck or I can click on the smaller deck. It's up to you what you wanna click. I'd recommend you try and go quite small. So for example, customers, customs festivals, I've got six cards to review. I've been doing it recently so I can go through these cards here. I would recommend at least 10 minutes a day for GCSE every single day. It's really good to try not to miss a day. And then for A-level, maybe a little bit more, 15 minutes, 20 minutes whatever you can do as a habit every single day. Something else to quickly show you is how easily you can edit cards. So for example, elegir, this Spanish GCSE word, means to choose. If you struggle to remember it, I would, for example, click edit. And then here you can change the word or change what it says to help you remember it. So for example, I would maybe write brackets to elect, which is almost in English is similar to choose. And that might help you remember it because elect looks more like elegir than choose does. You can write whatever you want here. It's like a little tip or something to remind you or to help you learn these words. You can click close and now the word is saved and it's updated to say to elect as well, whatever you've put afterwards. And you can edit cards like that. Especially when you get to A level where there's a lot of sort of difficult words that you need to learn. Put little jokes or little, you know, acronyms or whatever you can do to help yourself learn the word that makes sense in your head and that makes sense to you. Another example here, grabar, looks like to grab. I might put in brackets. Or I might just put here, doesn't mean grab, as a reminder for myself in the future. And that's how easy it is to edit cards. Um, and it just edits to yourself, but it doesn't affect anyone else. It just edits on your little um, account. Okay, I've now just logged into my personal Anki web account. So this is now the browser base so on the Anki web. This is the very similar thing to what I've just shown you on the desktop version. So we've got the same cards here. Theme one, the French cards I've just shown you. Theme two, theme three, the exact same numbers and everything here. You can also do it online. So this is the browser based version. I can click on, for example, here, click on theme one. I can go through all the cards here. The same numbers here, 82 cards to go. One card that I'm stuck on that I still need. I'm in the process of learning and zero new cards. Same exact thing here. It will all sync up to the desktop version as well. Where possible, I like to do the cards on the desktop version, but if you only want to do it on online version, if you're on the move or you're on your iPad or something, you can use the online version on any sort of Safari, on your phone, Chrome or anything like that as well. 
And that's basically how you need to be using Anki to get the most out of it. If you've ever got any questions or you get stuck, email um, anki at acetallanguages.com and me or someone else will get back to you.